Let's talk about the reduction of esters. An ester is a compound that contains a carbonyl and then an oxygen-carbon bond. This is one particular example of an ester. We can reduce this ester into an alcohol using a reducing agent. Now, there are many different reducing agents. I'm going to abbreviate this using a hydrogen with these block parentheses. Uh, but we'll talk about the specific reducing agents being sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride. So uh, what that's going to do is turn our ester into a primary alcohol. Remember, we refer to, we refer to this as a primary alcohol because the carbon containing the OH has only one other carbon attached to it. Let's look at how this mechanism works. In the first step, what we're going to do is use sodium borohydride. So sodium borohydride looks like a boron with four hydrogens coming off of it. That's going to give this boron a negative charge. To counterbalance that, we have a sodium ion in there, and that's why it is sodium borohydride. Being in organic chemistry, we don't really care about that sodium. We're mainly interested in carbons and hydrogens, nitrogens and oxygens. So here, this hydrogen is going to attack the carbonyl. The reason it wants to attack the carbonyl is the oxygen is more electronegative than the carbon, and that double bond allows for electrons to move up onto the oxygen. We'll go ahead and put in our lone pairs to keep track of those. So that makes this carbon very electrophilic. Well, since the boron has all these electrons surrounding it, it is happy to lose a hydrogen and two electrons. This is acting as a nucleophile. That's our electrophile. That gives us a tetrahedral intermediate. Now, this tetrahedral intermediate has a couple different options. If this was an aldehyde or ketone, I would just protonate this and have my alcohol right away. But since I have this other group here, which is kind of an ether at this point, I have a leaving group that's present. And so this tetrahedral intermediate can collapse. The electrons come back down from the oxygen, and I can kick off this other oxygen species. So I break that carbon-oxygen bond. This is only possible because I have this leaving group built into my system. That then gives us an aldehyde. I highly encourage you, when you're doing these reactions, to count your carbons. Notice over here, to the carbonyl, I have one, two, three carbons. If I count those same carbons here, one, two, three carbons to what was the carbonyl. Now that I've lost this section, I still have one, two, three carbons. That carbonyl can kind of make us lose track of where everything is supposed to go. So it can be helpful to keep those in mind. All right, so I have turned my ester into an aldehyde. Aldehydes are more reactive to this exact same reaction than esters are. The ester has two oxygens that are adding electron, or has this oxygen that's adding electron density back to that carbonyl. I don't have any groups over here adding electron density back to this carbonyl, which means this carbonyl has a greater partial positive than this carbonyl. And that means then that the aldehyde is more reactive. This is important because if I'm claiming that sodium borohydride will attack my ester, then I have to show that it's going to attack my aldehyde as well. So we're going to run this same process again. Another equivalent of sodium borohydride. I'll draw this out a little bit different way. Sometimes you see it drawn this way to kind of compact it down. Notice BH3 with another H, that's BH4. Same thing I've drawn over here. Put the counter ion in for posterity. That partially positive carbon is going to be attracted to the negatively charged hydrogen, and that's going to push the electrons back onto the oxygen. This will give us another tetrahedral intermediate. This hydrogen was present from the first uh, hydride attack. This hydrogen is present from the first hydride attack. This hydrogen is present from the second hydride attack. In our final step here now, we need to work this reaction up by uh, giving this oxygen a proton. 
Now, since I use sodium borohydride, normally these reactions are run in ethanol because sodium borohydride is not reactive to ethanol. So that's what ethanol looks like. That O minus can pick up a proton from ethanol and give us our final product. which is a primary alcohol.